one of these trees is the sun. And you can see that the tree, the, the smaller tree, the younger tree has grown in the shadow of the great tree. Hey guys, I'm Harmony Klingenmeyer and welcome to Hope Arises. If you've been with us for any amount of time, you know my passion is stewarding the voice of God in our lives. The last time we were together, we talked about Paul's identity as a slave of Christ. And I don't know about you, but I have been meditating upon this. What does it mean to be a bond servant of the Lord Jesus? And what's powerful to me really is how Jesus demonstrated his bond servant nature to the Father. Um, even even to the extent that he washed the feet of his betrayer. So I just I wanted to encourage you, if you haven't had a chance to listen to last week's episode, I know it's going to bless you. It might convict you. It convicts me for sure. It cuts my heart in just the right way, reminding me um, that Jesus himself was the servant of all. And to have an anointed mind is the mind that makes himself of no reputation, takes on himself the form of a servant and lays down his life for even his betrayers. Isn't that powerful? Oh my goodness. So powerful. Um, I feel God changing my heart even as I'm talking about it. I am so excited. I told you guys last week that we were going to have a special guest this week and we do. We have Dr. Candace Smithman here with us today and I had the pr privilege and pleasure to hear her teach on the book of Romans which is incredible because we were looking at the book of Romans last week. Garden Valley Church, my home church, is looking at the book of Romans. And um, we, uh, she taught on an incredible teaching on the book of Romans. She is, um, actually, why don't I just share what she has written here about herself, some powerful, powerful things that God is doing in and through her. Dr. Candace Smith Smithman is an international prophetic revivalist and healing minister who is a founding pastor now retired of Freedom Destiny Church in Orange Park, Florida, and founder of Dream Mentors Transformational Life Coaching Institute, a biblical life counseling and coaching educational organization that teaches and trains educators and coaches in the speciality of life coaching. She received her doctorate of ministry in Christian counseling from Jacksonville Theological Seminary in Jacksonville, Florida, and has her master's of arts in human relations, Christian counseling at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. She also holds a master's of theology from the International College of Excellence in Tinley Park, Illinois, and a bachelor of business administration from James Madison University. As a person who loves scholarship as a person who loves um education as a teacher myself when i when i look at this woman's uh the time and energy that she has invested in uh her education it, it just it's astonishing and so exciting to me um i just i i see an investment here of of passion and time and energy and resources she is currently the host of Glory Road TV show, which can be seen internationally through Faith USA Network, Faith UK, Faith Africa, King Television, Praise Television, Precious Television, Charisma Magazine Online, Kingdom Flame TV, and a host of others. And if you want to go to her website, you can find out about all of um, her shows and all of, all of the work that she's doing in her written work as well. She also hosts Your Path to Destiny. Uh, she is an author of lots of materials, lots of books, but she has a new book, Angels of Fire, The Ministry of Angels in the End Time Revival, Releasing Heaven, Creating a Supernatural Environment Through Heavenly Encounters. She is co-author of Soul Transformation, Your Personal Journey, and Standing in His Righteousness, The Power to Heal Relationships. Wow. 
She also authored His Sufficiency for My Authenticity, Eight Keys of Authentic Relationship with God and Others, and other books as an author contributor. She has written Biblical Life Coaching Curriculum for secular and Christian organizations and is a consultant for many social media and television uh, outlets. Wow. Dr. Candice. Let's let's bring her in right now. Dr. Candace, we are so excited that you are here with us today. Thank you for being on Hope Arises. Well, oh, Harmony, it's truly my honor to be here today. What a blessing. You are so amazing. I just love your whole persona on camera. You're just um, just full of life. I think you truly emanate hope arises, the word for your program. And so I'm so glad that you invited me to be a part of your show today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. I just am filled with joy today because um, your book, Soul Transformation, is, I believe it's going to be pivotal in people's lives. Really, um, my heart, you know, I shared a little bit of my story. My heart is to see the generation healed of the orphan spirit and healed of their trauma and um, the, the rejection and abandonment that this generation is carrying. And so when I, when I encountered your book, I was so excited and I wanted to give you the opportunity through another platform, you have many platforms, but through another ways and means um, to minister to this generation. And what, what's so incredible is as you read all of the um, awesome opportunities that the Lord has given Dr. Candace speaking to my audience, you'll notice that each one is a little bit different. And our audience here at Hope Arises is a little bit different too. As a foster mom, I reach a lot of foster moms. As, a, as an adoptive mom, I reach a lot of adopted adopted people and also people who are adopting. And so I'm excited for you to release this word over that audience today. Oh, me too. You know, when I think about being a parent that adopts children or fosters children, I really think about the heart of the father himself. I mean, we were all orphans before we came to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior and just having the father uh, reach out to us, right? We were all prodigals and he brought us uh, into that safe space and safe place. And so what you've been doing with your life and, and those that are viewing today that are um parents of, of uh, children that have been abandoned, abused, and you've invited them to come into your home, you have the heart of the father. I mean, that's what the father does. He invites uh, those that are in need to come into his home, to be loved, to be cared for, to be encouraged, and to come to know who he is so that they can be like him, so they can be like their father, so that they can take on his identity. And so the more that you share and the more that your viewers share uh, with the children that you're bringing into your homes and spaces and places, uh, the heart of the father, the more you exemplify that, the more healing is going to come to them and the more they're going to come to know uh, who they are in Christ and, and just the beautiful uh, nature of God and, and his love for them. And so I commend you all because that is uh, an intense task to uh, invite those uh, to come into your home, those that are, are abandoned, abused, forsaken. And uh, But it is the heart of the father. And so you're, you're truly doing the will of the Lord. Yes, yes. And we want to encourage anyone who's listening, if you have even considered being a foster or adoptive parent, or if you're feeling you're just feeling the burn to minister to orphans, um, be bold and be brave and, and know that the same God who empowered you to accept Jesus as Lord can empower you to minister to a broken generation. It's no harder than getting saved. That's what I always say. People people think ministering to orphans is very challenging and I don't wanna downplay it. It can be hard. Um, it comes with its own challenges, just like raising your own kids come with challenges. Uh, but the same God that pours out grace to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to, to deliver those oppressed by demons, um, can empower his his children to take in the orphan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Candace, I wanted you to share a little bit. What inspired you and your husband, Adam, to write Soul Transformation? You know, um, Harmony, we'd been pastoring a church for 
uh, for quite some time and, um, and just, you know, being out there just doing ministry work and noticing that there was a really a lack in the body of Christ, uh, understanding who they are in Christ. Uh, and, and exactly when we, uh, in Christendom, we'll use that language, you know, you have to be born again. And people are like, well, well, what, what needs to be born again? You need to be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. And, and people don't understand what some of these terms mean for what actually takes place in the supernatural and in the natural when someone comes to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so this book is a compilation. It's a workbook. Uh, you work through it. Um, you do something every day for five days for six weeks. There's diagrams in it. But it really helps people uh, learn to, to stand on the firm foundation of knowing uh, the process of not only salvation, but also of soul transformation. Uh, we can become born again and, and receive God's spirit on the inside of us, get a brand new spirit, be whole and pure and righteous on the inside. But our soul is in a process and the soul being the mind, the will and the emotions, or in other words, it can be known as the heart. The soul, the heart is in a process of transformation. And so we really teach over a six week period of time uh, through uh, teaching people to research the word themselves as they get into the Bible. We have them looking up the scriptures and we have them integrating with the word themselves to be able to understand that God has them, has us all on a process of soul transformation. And, and it's really beginning to look at, at life from the aspect of process. Not uh, it, everything is completed because of the death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ, but there is still a process that we grow in. And it's becoming uh, um, understanding, it's, it's understanding, learning, and and following through with that process that really determines uh, if we're going to walk in the power of God through understanding uh, our identity in Christ. Yes, yes. And you know what? This this is the book, Soul Transformation. And one thing I love about it is your just do it sections. They're amazing. I think the number one issue with a lot of teaching in the body of Christ is that it's not always very practical, you know, like what can I do today that helps me overcome tomorrow? And as a teacher, we know that um, good learning is always scaffolded on previous knowledge, right? So th th it's really important that you're able to apply what you've been taught. And as I've been going through this book, what I've really recognized is how applicable this, this really is. You can go out and apply it in your life today. I'm sure you guys did that intentionally when you built the book. Yes, we did. We wanted people to take bite-sized pieces, but to be able to chew on it and then and then uh, operate in faith and action. So have your faith built and then begin to activate that faith by actually uh, moving forward. There are a few chapters in the book that talk about the spiritual disciplines. And I think that um, those are really necessary to learn and understand that the processes of soul transformation mean we have to allow God to transform our character. And there are processes that he does to do that. But we have to be active with him. We have to be praying. We, we need to be reading the word. We need to be uh, celebrating uh, at church. We need to be going through certain motions that are uh, well-rounded so that we can position ourselves to allow God to deal with us and to deal with our soul. I mean, it's, it's not as difficult to say, Lord, I receive you as my savior, as it is to go through the process of surrendering to God as he transforms you into the likeness of his son. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's far more difficult than it is to walk the aisle the very first day and say, I receive Jesus as my Lord and savior, because then you enter into a realm where uh, you will be challenged on the word that you've spoken. You'll be challenged on your commitment uh, to uh, be one who is a disciple of Christ and one that positions themselves for that soul transformation. And, and so we teach about the, the spiritual disciplines and how you can actively get with God uh, to make yourself available so that he can begin to start transforming you. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that term, spiritual disciplines. For people who uh, might be brand new to the faith, um, 
I'd love for you to just go into that a little bit. What does that mean, a spiritual discipline? And um, you named some of them. Maybe you want to pick one that's a little bit less known or, you know, I we know, for example, that communion is a spiritual discipline, but we don't know the power of communion. So maybe maybe you can choose one and, and go into a little bit more detail. What is spiritual disciplines? Yes, spiritual discipline is something that you set aside each and every day over a seven day period of time that properly positions you to receive a change in your heart, receive a change in your soul. And so if you put those things into practice, then what they do is they open up opportunity for the Lord to begin to minister to you in those particular areas, transform you into uh, the identity of his son. You know, the word Christian, it really it means little Christ to have the identity of the Lord. And so to be disciplined does not mean that we look at things from a legalistic standpoint, right. but we look at it from the avenue that we are practicing things that open us up to be more free. See, the truth of the matter is we are bound from birth. And when we come to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we've been set free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. But Amen. the soul itself still has habits and patterns and really uh, sticky areas it likes to cling to that it does not want to let go of. And so the disciplines help us begin to loosen up those habits and those patterns that uh, were acquired before we came to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and then uh, enable our soul to start to walk in that place of freedom. Uh, then we began to really start operating in our spiritual giftings, and we really began to start ministering to others. We really began to start seeing signs, miracles, and wonders. In my school, the Supernatural, my Soul Transformation course is the very first course that we have people take. I want you to know, Harmony, people will reach out to me sometimes, and they'll say, you know what? Um, I really feel like I'm more advanced than just soul transformation, you know? And I was like, listen, soul transformation is the foundation. Yes. I said, yeah. if you, you can operate in signs, miracles, and wonders. You can pray and prophesy. You can use the amazing giftings that God has given you. But that doesn't mean that your character is going to match the gifting that's on the inside of you. The gifts of God are irrevocable, and he'll use anyone that is on fire for him. But down the road... You will not get too far before the Lord properly positions you to get your character into yes. alignment. And really, when we talk about soul transformation, we're talking about getting the character into alignment. Harmony, there's nothing that um, feels really special about getting your character into alignment. It's not all, you know, ooey gooey, wonderful whipped cream on top kind of thing. It can be hard. It can be taxing. That's why we call it a discipline. It's because yeah. are you willing to stay uh, with the process while God uh, transforms you? Are you willing to persevere in your faith? Are yeah. you willing to allow God to get into those places that you'd rather say, no, no, Lord, don't touch that area. Listen, everything has to come open and bare before him. And so the spiritual yeah. disciplines are, um, are those opportunities that we agree to. Uh, I know um, the Lord talks about fasting. Fasting is one of the spiritual disciplines, but he wants an acceptance fast unto him. That's in the book of Joel, uh, Joel chapter two. He said, you know, uh, you can miss your meals and do all this. He says, but I, I, the Lord want an acceptable fast. And what he means by that is he wants one that will, will rend our hearts before God. And so it means it's you, you agree to get into this place with God where you want to be intimate with him and you really yes. want him to work on you. That, mm -hmm. that you didn't just say, I want to be a Christian and then just think you're going to slide by or you only wanted to do it because it was fire insurance for you because you weren't going to, you know, you don't go to hell. You know, it's right. really the fact that you want to know God and the way we know him can be a path that is very narrow and it can have some uh, obstacles uh, in the way that we got to learn to get around. And so yeah. the 12 year disciplines, uh, spiritual disciplines is what I discuss in the book and we break it down um i mentioned before praying fasting studying the word of god but there's also things like silence solitude, solitude. service yeah. unto the lord uh oh, these yeah. are the kinds of things you know communion is something that we do but really communion is a remembrance of an outward uh work that happened when we became baptized really mm -hmm. what we're saying is that when we take the cracker and the juice we're saying in agreement that 
then we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And now we're healed, saved, and redeemed. And we're remembering this every day so that we can go forward. But communion would fall in line with things like um, silence and solitude before the Lord. It's yes. doing certain things. It would also fall in line with celebration. And celebration is something where you would go and worship on a weekly basis in a community uh, where you can uh, really receive from the Lord there. And so there's a lot of different disciplines and we go specifically uh, into them and how they can be a benefit to position your soul for this transformation. Yeah, that's beautiful. As you were talking, I was thinking about King David. I was thinking about the fact that, you know, he was a, he was a youngster, a teenager when he received his anointing from the prophet Samuel um, and his anointing uh, made him king. But the truth is, is uh, or I should, you know, it gave him the crown. It gave him the right to the crown. But the kingship, the personhood of being a king was formed not in the anointing, but in the cave when he was being, his will was being broken and remolded. You know, God took him to the potter. He picked out the clay on that day. God, Father God picked out the clay on that day, but then he took the clay to the potter's wheel and he began to pound the clay and he formed out of the clay a, a king. And so many of us are, we're carrying anointings. The other th thing we need to know, you know, you might be looking at your own life like, why isn't God allowing me to move forward in this anointing? The Lord, he wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers and you can become crushed it can it can break you in the wrong way if the the stalwart steadfast character of christ has not been formed inside of you so like dr candace says allow god to take you on the journey of transformation i love that and i i love um you know i in my previous life, I had some really negative experiences with fasting, but Papa God has renewed fasting to me in this last season, in the last year and a half. He, he wooed me to a place. And that's what I like to say, because it's not about works. I could go home and lay on my bed, starfish all day, and, and, and he would still love me. It's not about works, but he wooed me to a place where my heart longed for obedience. And that changed me, it transformed me. And then he began to talk to me about the value and the purpose from that place of knowing I was loved. So he's redeemed fasting for me and it's been really powerful in my life. And you're right, Dr. Candace, it positions our hearts in his presence. It's not our work, it's his presence that does the transformation, but the work brings us into his presence. It's just a beautiful partnership. It is. It is. And, you know, the Lord wants all of us to come to that place of, of uh, submitting to him that because of his love for us, because of his desire to see us in the places of where we're walking in that prosperity in our health and in our finances and in everything in our life, that this is a pathway that will help bring about walking in the greater realms of prosperity that he offers us. You know, Adam and Eve, they didn't have to struggle with this until right. they chose to eat the forbidden fruit. And we are the result of the until. And although all things have been redeemed through the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ, all things have been redeemed, but we're walking that redemption out every day. And, and that's what the process of transformation is all about. It's about the fact that, yes, all things have been redeemed in your life. That's a true fact. You are living in the dominion of life. But because there was death, in your genes you have to work that death out and so we position ourselves with discipline so that we are able to become more free when life touches those death places and we become alive there then we begin to know more of the realms of prosperity more of the dominion of life more of who he is because he is only in those spaces and places mm -hmm. there is no death within him what, right. what afflicted us in the beginning does not afflict him. He went through the affliction as a man, all right, so that we would be set free from this affliction. Mm 
Yeah. And, and in the process of being set free from the affliction, we have to be willing to submit to him and surrender to him in such a way that we carefully grab his hand and say, Lord, I'll walk with you until you can work out of me anything that is not of you, Father. I want to be whole in my soul. I want to be complete in every area of my life. I want the blessings to flow from heaven into the realms that you've called me to live in. I want to be that voice for you, Father. I want to be that kingdom citizen. And this is all part of that preparation process. You know, let's look at it like Esther, you know. I mean, she was prepared first before she went in to see the king, yeah. you know. And so there is a preparation time. You know, as much as things are complete, things are still in process. And they're only yeah. in process because of the fall of man. It is God's desire that we live in the completeness all the time. But because you are complete, properly position yourself now to mm -hmm. be one that works out that completion, right? The apostle Paul says, work out your salvation with, yes. with uh, fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is work out this sanctification process, work it out. And so this book, Soul Transformation, walks you through the processes that God will take us all through. And yeah. it really, it's just saying, make yourself available. So we basically mm -hmm. teach you in the book how to be available Hmm. And be willing, because it's our will that will often stop the progress. Your <laughs> salvation isn't halted. You're still going right. to heaven. Right. You know, but 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 while you're here on earth, don't you want to experience all the blessings that can be yours and be the representative of the king that he's calling mm -hmm. you to be? Well, mm -hmm. that means learning to surrender. And so we really make it compact there, yeah. helping you and we guiding you through it on a daily basis. If you mm -hmm. can stay disciplined for six weeks, you know, it's a great time to pray fast and just do the study yeah. so that you're able to press in and, and you will see change in your life. You will. Mm -hmm. I have practiced these disciplines for many Many, many years. I want you to know the Lord. I mean, he has gotten in my stuff. I would not sit in the seat that I sit in today if I had not been willing to be yes. taken to some really, really hard places. Yes. Lots of tears, lots of no, Lord, you know, lots mm -hmm. of I don't want to look at that. God, don't show me that thing. And he's like, we've got to look there because I am perfecting you. You're perfect, but I'm perfecting you. Yes. And this is standing. And, you know, you know, Harmony, really any of these things that we won't let go of that actually stand between us and God. And you know, because you've walked with God a long time, with those people that that trust him and know his love, we don't want anything between us and the That's Father. Great. We want nothing. That's Let there great. be nothing. Let the enemy have nothing. You know, when Jesus um, was healing and doing the miracles, he would say, he, he when he would look straight at the devil, he would say, there is nothing in you that is like me. That's he would great. clearly say, listen, you are you and I am me and we are not alike and I mm -hmm. want anything in me that is not like God to be cool. removed and so the spiritual disciplines are helpful because they say they make us say God I'm willing oh let yeah. me just do this today and I know you're going to come and rescue me from me yeah yeah that's the the truth is Holy Spirit has empowered you to do what is impossible in, in ourselves and this is it's it's interesting to me if you study like Peter, Peter, um, before the day of Pentecost. So we see him in his salvation, like when at the end of John, John 21, when he and the boys go back to fishing, uh, and they don't catch anything and they have a replay of a miracle previously in their life. And he jumps out of the boat and swims to Jesus and Jesus questions him. Do you love me? Do you agape me? And, and he responds, I phileo you. And, and go, Jesus is drawing him and wooing him back wooing him back to intimacy and and out of shame really out of the shame of his failure and isn't that amazing how jesus is willing to meet peter so J peter is saved he believes that jesus is has been raised from the dead he believes that jesus is the atonement for his sins and yet he isn't the peter we meet on the day of pentecost that takes the holy spirit and, and so if you're, if you're in, I want to just, you know, speak to people who are listening. If you're in a situation, you're like, man, I feel powerless. The truth is you need Holy Spirit to come and pour out grace on you because, because grace is both the power and the desire to do the will of God. And you're not, 
you're not going to be able to in your own strength, but with the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, it is possible to position yourself by practicing the disciplines. And in that place, God will bring exponential growth. So Dr. Candice, I would love it if you want to pray and you know prophesy over our uh, audience today, just whatever the Holy Spirit gives you. Yes. Oh, Lord, we just thank you so much for those that are watching today. We thank you, Father, that they have hearts to want to know you and know you more. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that knowing you more means we have to often position ourselves to receive from you, to, to receive in the way that we will be trained and transformed into the likeness of your son. So, Father, I just ask those that are watching today to become willing. And if there's anything in their hearts, Father, that is stopping them from that willingness, I just want to speak to people right now. If you've overcome intensive trauma you may have walls and obstacles that are up and you don't want to let those down you don't want God to touch some of those places or or you give a little to him to touch but you won't give the whole thing so I just I just want to prophesy to you right now Lord I I, I just um, thank you father that you're going down deep into those that have been traumatized right now father and you're touching with your love just receive receive his liquid love right now in those spaces in those places just open up just get in that private place place with him and say, Lord, I'm ready now to receive. Go to those places and pull out any of those roots. Pull out anything, Father, that is still there, Lord Jesus, so that I can begin to move in the plan and purpose and destiny that you have for me this year. Father, I thank you that great things are coming, Lord Jesus, to those that are watching, and you want nothing between you and them. And so I thank you, Father, that supernatural healing is coming to some of you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that right now, at the sound of my voice, you're going to step into the realms of prosperity. You're going to begin to see, smell, hear, taste, and touch at new spiritual levels. Father, I praise you and I thank you right now. Whoa, just receive, just receive right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father, for firing fire coming upon those that are viewing today those that are listening lord right now father you're stirring their spirits father and you're causing them to leap with joy yes leap with joy because god is taking you to new dimensions in him father i thank you that then knowing you is inexhaustible and father i thank you lord that no matter where we're at when we receive this prayer father we will go to the next levels of knowing you lord jesus you deal with this individually father and so as you're dealing with each one of us individually we are going to new places and spaces in you father and so we thank you not only for this healing but for this activation right now an impartation to go to next levels with the lord in the supernatural right now in the mighty name of jesus father i thank you lord you're releasing the realms of prosperity upon us and you're stirring things right now i believe that some of you are being stirred in your spirit right now why don't you comment and reach out to harmony reach out to myself so that we can know who you are and what god is doing in your heart right now Woo! i feel the presence of the Lord. Yes, glory. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Jesus is so good. I I can't wait to read your ne the next book. And I, you did mention to me that you have a new book coming out, correct? Can you tell us just a, a little bit about that? Yes, it's called Heavenly Portals, uh, how eternity impacts our past, present, and our future. So actually, it's really sharing about how an eternal mindset will totally transform your past, your present, and your future, and really God's will for what His people are supposed to be walking in right now. There's a difference, Harmony, between the resurrection and the ascension. And I go through the That's details good. in this book about this so that the church can can really understand that we are ascended in Christ. We spend a lot of time talking about the power of the resurrection, which is truly amazing, and we cannot call ourselves Christians without it. But it's time to get beyond the fact that sin, death, and the grave has been overcome. We now got to get into our position and begin to live from that space and place. And what does that look like? And how does having an eternal mindset affect the earth realms? And I talk a lot about time. And and there's really depths in time. Um, uh, King Solomon spoke about time and the importance of it in understanding. And there's an earth time and an eternal time. And I want to teach the people about the power of living in eternal time for everything that we do in the earth today. Wow. Well, I think I want to have you come back and talk about that more. 
How's that sound? <laughs> that sounds perfect. I would love to. Will you tell the people where they can go to learn more about you and your ministry? Yes. If you'll simply go to my Facebook page at Candice Smitheman, it's my public page. And there um, you'll find something called the Glory Road Community. And I'd love for you to become a part of my community. We're looking for a thousand members in the community. And um, it's a wonderful place not only to receive ministry from me, because I'm in there teaching every single week. And I do a Q&A um, where people can interact with me on various questions and things. But also you'll have the opportunity to minister to others too. It is a special community. You can go to gloryroadcommunity.com and you can also sign up there as well. There's a registration process to be part of the Glory Road community, but it's the best way to have the opportunity for me to, to mentor you and to encourage you. And I have uh, other leaders that are in there as well. And so I want to see as many leaders as possible in there so that they can begin to also be doing uh, ministry with others. You can also go to my website at candacesmithman.com and find out about my school of the supernatural find out my about my dream Inner's transformational life coaching school if you want to learn how to be a biblical life coach or a transformational life coach so i have a lot of different things uh that are going on and and of course my um my book angels of fire was recently released um in uh, 2020 and my new one um is going to be out i'm sorry it was released in 2021 my new one will be out here in 2022 so Awesome. Well, I'm going to go and become part of your Glory Road community for sure. I, that sounds really exciting to me. Friends, thank you so much for joining us today. And Dr. Candace, thank you so much for sharing the revelation that God has given you. It's really blessed us. Amen. Well, I'm so happy to be here. It truly was uh, my honor. Thank you, uh, Harmony, for having me on today. My pleasure. So friends, we look forward to seeing you next week on Hope Arises. You can find us on my YouTube channel, Harmony um, M. Klingenmeyer. Uh, the youth, my YouTube channel is called Harmony M. Klingenmeyer. And you can find us on the Life Network for Women app. You can download it on your phone. There's tons of awesome teaching on there. So I recommend that you download it. You can find us every week on Tuesday at 4 p.m. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Have an awesome week. God bless you.